Disney has just released the first two episodes of the new Ahsoka series, and right at the beginning, we can already see a really interesting and rarely mentioned part of the entire Star Wars storyline, intergalactic travel. It is quite strange that so far there have been almost no attempts to discover places outside their own galaxy in the Star Wars lore until now. This idea was only touched upon in a few novels, such as Bloodline and The High Republic Into the Dark. It's mentioned that those who tried intergalactic travel never returned. Yet, in the first episode of Ahsoka, the former rebel and Jedi apprentice Sabine Wren opens a map that displays a separate galaxy. This galaxy potentially contains the location of her friend Ezra Bridger and their archenemy Admiral Thrawn. The map is shown again later when Morgan Elsbeth reveals that Thrawn might be situated in the remotest corner of the universe. This suggests that finding them will require traveling beyond the galaxy to a place called Paradea. The concept of intergalactic travel got me thinking about a theoretical scenario. If Star Wars is set in a galaxy far, far away, and they are now experimenting with traveling across galaxies, what would happen if, during their travels, one of the factions manages to find our Milky Way, and somehow lands on the only known planet where life thrives, Earth? Let's set aside the fact that these stories happened a long time ago, and imagine that space travelers don't arrive on Earth to find dinosaurs or medieval knights, although that's an interesting concept too. But find us in 2023, a complex and slightly advanced civilization that has just entered the digital era. Of course, the outcome would likely differ if a Republic starship were to enter our planet compared to one from the Galactic Empire. One is an over-bureaucratic democracy just like ours, and the other is an authoritarian regime with a higher likelihood of attempting to invade us in the first place. However, both of these regimes have their own troubles within their own territories, so I'm uncertain if they would care to travel so far without the necessary resources and supply routes to this distant place, only to find only one planet with inhabitants. For this scenario, I'll choose a faction that might have its motives to undertake such a journey and travel far away to establish a new base. This faction begins gaining power around the same time when the Ahsoka series takes place. According to the Star Wars storyline, after the Empire's crushing defeat at the Battle of Jakku, a group of Imperials fled to the unknown regions of the galaxy where they formed the First Order. They built their Grand Army and a large fleet of starships, and also transformed the planet Illum into the superweapon Starkiller base, which they later used in The Force Awakens. But what could happen if they traveled even further than the unknown regions? What if they decided to make Earth their new main base? In this example, the First Order doesn't plan to destroy Earth as they did with the Hosnian system in The Force Awakens. Instead, their aim would be to effectively occupy or conquer the planet. Let's explore how it could unfold, and what chances Earth would have. The invasion's initial phase involves sending covert operatives to gather intelligence on Earth's technological capabilities, military defenses, and societal structures. If they want the operation to run smoothly, they need a main base to be able to control the assault. So the First Order establishes its headquarters on the dark side of the moon, using advanced technology brought from their own galaxy. Before the main invasion, they initiate a series of targeted cyber attacks on Earth's communication networks, disrupting global communication and causing confusion. Sabotage operations target power grids and defense systems, causing localized disruptions that create vulnerabilities in Earth's defenses. These attacks provoke Earth's governments and make them realize that an unimaginable threat is approaching, requiring an immediate response. They inform the population about proof of alien life posing an imminent threat to humanity and declare a worldwide emergency. The problem is that international cooperation is slow due to the overly bureaucratic system of the United Nations, and there is not enough time to prepare for a large-scale invasion. Orbital Assault After gathering sufficient information about strategic targets and locations, the First Order launches orbital bombardment using ion cannons to disable key satellites, disrupting global communication and navigation systems. Orbital bombardment also targets Earth's ground-based missile defense systems, reducing Earth's ability to retaliate. While the First Order might not possess the vast naval force of the Empire, its armada of star destroyers poses the biggest threat to Earth. The Order has invested significant credits in creating a vast fleet of destroyers. If they position a few of them in Earth's orbit, it would be difficult for Earth's military to launch effective attacks without facing the destructive power of the destroyers. 
Earth possesses around 12,000 nuclear warheads. But if the destroyers use shields and countermeasures, ballistic missiles might struggle to hit them and cause significant damage. However, since the Order's goal is not to destroy Earth, they would later need to send military troops to the planet for an air and ground assault. The attack begins with a large-scale aerial assault using TIE fighters launched from the Star Destroyers blockading Earth. TIE fighters engage Earth's fighter jets, using advanced maneuvers and energy weaponry to gain air supremacy. Primary targets include military bases, airfields, and communication centers to cripple Earth's ability to coordinate a unified response. If the coordinated bombardments and air raids succeed, they set the stage for the next step, ground invasion. With air and orbital supremacy established, the First Order deploys ATAT walkers and ground forces to strategic locations, aiming to seize key infrastructure and resources. Major cities are targeted to establish control centers and subdue local resistance. They secure communication hubs, government buildings, and military installations to establish a foothold. This captured infrastructure is then exploited to disseminate First Order propaganda and control Earth's information flow, further sowing chaos and discord. While many military bases were obliterated in the prior bombardments, Earth's forces struggled to mount a counterattack against the invading ground forces. Despite these challenges, they managed to achieve modest victories against the stormtroopers. Earth's forces effectively eliminate slow-moving ATATs using agile and fast-attacking tanks that remain deployable. Leveraging the advantage of camouflage against the white armor of the stormtroopers, Earth's defenders find their conventional weapons more suited to ground combat than the laser blasters. As the battle rages on, Earth's military deploys elite special forces units skilled in covert operations. These units adeptly infiltrate First Order positions, sabotaging key facilities, disrupting supply lines, and neutralizing high-value targets. This behind-the-lines warfare catches the invaders off guard, inducing confusion and weakening their grip on captured territories. The element of surprise favors Earth's defenders, enabling them to exploit vulnerabilities within the First Order's occupation strategy. The Path to Victory Earth's unified resistance prolongs the conflict, resulting in battles of attrition and dwindling resources. Earth's military adapts to the First Order's tactics, utilizing unconventional strategies to exploit vulnerabilities and inflict losses. Internal dissent and fatigue emerge within the First Order as the protracted resistance exacts its toll. The Final Battle Leveraging their newfound knowledge and countermeasures, Earth's forces initiate a massive counteroffensive. A climactic battle unfolds in space and on the ground, culminating in the destruction of several Star Destroyers. This united resistance delivers a resounding message to the invaders. The human spirit is unconquerable. Conclusion the First Order's plan is formidable, capitalizing on surprise attacks, advanced technology, and strategic targets. However, Earth's unity, innovation, and indomitable spirit pose unforeseen challenges. As the invaders grapple with a sustained struggle and escalating resistance, they ultimately acknowledge Earth's unyielding determination, a stark reminder that unity, and only unity, can prevail over even the most advanced weaponry.